Prices of local rice have more than doubled in Nigeria in the last two years due to an import ban and a drop in the country's currency, a situation benefiting local farmers. The government has also subsidized tractors, mills and fertilizers, as well as made cheaper loans available, attracting many to the sector. Meanwhile, farmers say there are still a number of challenges stirring efforts to boosting rice production in the country. From unemployed locals to foreign investors and Africa's richest men, many people in Nigeria are investing in rice farming. The reason is that domestic rice prices have more than doubled in the last two years due to an import ban and a dive in the Nigerian currency. At the same time, the government is subsidizing tractors, mills and fertilizers, as well as arranging cheaper loans to boost production with considerable success. If I get 80 bucks, maybe at that time, I sell in one bag for 5,000, 4,005 to 6,000. So about last year, uh, at least I spent about 500,000 because of the inflation. So I sell in one bag, uh, one bag about, uh, for one bag about 10,000 to 11,000. So I got about 300,000 profit. Mohammed took up growing rice three years ago to help fund his university studies in Bauchi. When he finished last year, he opted for a career in the field rather than in architecture. But the drive to cut an annual food import bill of $20 billion has run into the kind of problems that have long bedeviled Nigeria's efforts to build up an economy outside its dominant oil industry. Despite rice growing being a government priority, many farmers still work with their bare hands in fields in Gadao, in the country's northern Bauchi state, and lack irrigation channels. Mills are often ramshackle, while poor roads make getting the crop from the main growing fields in northern Nigeria to consumers in the south difficult and costly. Nigeria has imported 110 mills, which remove grit in the process, but most farmers still go to villages to handle their rice with homemade machines. The rice boom has also drawn large-scale investment from Africa's richest man, Aliko Dangote, and foreign firms to supply the huge market of 190 million people who consider rice to be an important part of their diet, used in popular recipes like jollof, a type of spicy fried rice. Nigerian growers also struggle to meet quality standards set by foreign agribusinesses, with consumers complaining about having to extract grit from the rice, which is on sale in local markets. The problem with the local rice is the stone. But if it basically it has been destoned, it tastes better than the foreign rice. So if I'm in a hurry, I prefer the foreign rice because of the stone. There are no stones. But if I have all the time, I always prefer the local rice because it is more tastier. Larger investors hope Nigeria will not repeat the mistakes of the past by losing interest in domestic food production even when global oil prices pick up again, helping the Naira to recover and making imports cheaper. Well, all communities in Cross River State yet to be connected to the national grid for electricity will soon have transformers installed. Well, this comes following a directive from the state governor, Ben Ayade, that such communities be connected in the shortest possible time. The director general of the state electrification agency says the governor is passionate about rural electrification as power supply is fundamental to rural development and economic emancipation. Notwithstanding the fact that we have done all of this, are still doing this in terms of, you know, provisions of um, uh, transformers, distribution transformers. He has gone further to give us a matching order. That his goal, his ultimate goal, is that before the end of this, his first tenure in office, that all communities in Cross River State that have not seen electricity infrastructure or they are not being connected to the national grid. His major and our major task now and onward is to ensure that all the communities that have no light should be provided with light. It's a matching order he has given us. There is nowhere in the Federal Republic of Nigeria today, no state government today, that is attempting to invest in electricity because that burden had been taken out of them.
It is not a private organization, but here in our state, our governor is doing that for the interest of the people, for the welfare of the people, for the development of the people. And just before we go, the Nigeria Customs Service Federal Operations Unit Zone COA Emo State has seized contraband goods with duty paid value of 172 million naira. Displaying the seized items at the Abia Emo Command Headquarters of the Federal Operations Unit, the area controller in the zone, Mohamed Garba, says the men of the command seized bales of secondhand clothing. One container load of timber made cartons of machetes along the Owe on Echa Benin and the Owe Port Harcourt Highway. Well, that's news across Nigeria at this time. Many thanks for watching. I'm Minister Walker. See you soon.